Hey, happy Friday, Grayscalers. Okay, it's been a while since I did a video, one week to be exact, so I figured I'll just do an update here on some things. I'm not gonna do a ton of videos, like I said, in the summer, unless big things happen, like an assassination attempt, things like that, then I obviously will. Um, I wanna say a few things about prices on Grayscale Trust, like BCHG and LTCN, what it takes to be a Grayscale investor to ride out the storm and uh you know stuff like that so first let me just talk about prices there are some people that are just like they can't handle the grayscale trust price mo movement you know with prices going down recently and and okay i get it the thing is here's the the way i look at this like cryptocurrency is not for everybody because crypto is in itself a wild ride way wilder than stocks or anything else that you could get into and so a lot of people stay away from it because they, they can't handle the ups and downs well, with the Grayscale, you kind of get a double whammy because you, not only do you have the moves of the underlying crypto like BCH or LTC, but you've got the move of the premiums that oftentimes move in correlation with the underlying crypto, but not necessarily always. So it's like we could have a situation and we have in the past, like where BCH goes up and yet BCHG goes down and people are left scratching their head and they're wondering why. Well, it's because premiums are coming down. That's the way it is. So it is frustrating for a lot of people. Plus, too, it's like people get frustrated because they're like, my portfolio was a lot higher back in March, April, right? You know, when we had this nice big run up. And that's, it's not normal, by the way. I'm going to talk about the run ups and I talk about what I'm going to do differently next cycle uh, with run ups like that. But, you know, it's like run ups like that are not normal. A lot of people FOMO'd in either for the first time or they added to their position, you know, when things were, looked like they were going to moon, right? And um, and that's just not the way it is with, in crypto. It's not not with these big alts, it, it, like Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. It's not normal. It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen. Pretty much ever. I I can almost guarantee it. I can't guarantee it. You know, but uh, it's it's probably not gonna happen ever. So you know. Um, but they they look at that and they go, you know, we're way down, and they they get depressed about this. I I don't care. Guess what? I mean, the prices of the trust could like drop by 50% next week. And I would not give a shit. Why? Because I'm in it to win it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell my shares next week or next month. It's, it's going to be a while. It's not actually going to be that long. The earliest that I see things popping off, probably for LTC and first, probably that's just because it popped off first last cycle. Doesn't mean it's going to happen this cycle, but probably is that LTCN would be at its earliest, probably start start its ascent end of September. But we could be pushed back, you know, a month, maybe two, I don't know, depending on macro uh, stuff that's going on with the economy, depending on what's happening with Bitcoin, that's gonna, those are gonna be huge drivers. So I don't know, but end of September is basically the beginning of that. And that's just like, like less than two months away, right? That we're very close. Like, I don't give a crap what happens tomorrow, today, next week. I, I just don't, I don't care. Uh, because I know, generally speaking, where things are going to go over the next several months. And that's all that matters to me. That's why I invested. Okay, so let me talk about some things I'm going to do differently next cycle. All right, hopefully I remember this. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have a little bit of a uh, remnant of the cold that I caught um, a week and a half ago. And actually, I, you know, I think I got it from my son, but I actually, I think it's, it's also because it, I was doing a cleanse and it's like, sometimes when you do a cleanse, your body picks up shit and you get sick or you get it, you get a headache or you get a cold or whatever. I'll, maybe I'll do a separate video on that at some point, but not in this video. Anyway, so some things I'm going to do next cycle. Um, so what I'm going to do next cycle in my uh, tax-free accounts, in my Roth IRA and my son's Roth is I'm going to do the following. I'm not going to do this in taxable accounts if I'm in uh, Grayscale. I probably won't be in Grayscale at all on my big account. I'll go into miners and Coinbase, MicroStrategy, stuff like that, but not Grayscale. In my son's UTMA account, which is taxable though, I'm not going to uh, employ this the, this strategy. So we had some really good examples earlier this year where we had run-ups where people were like, oh, this thing's going to take off like LTC and WCHG to the moon. We had a nice run up in January and then we had a severe correction. It, it felt severe at the time. Looking back, it's hardly anything, right? And then we had a really big run up at the end of March, beginning of April. And then we had a severe correction that's lasted a while. And people are, you know, sad about that. But what I'm going to do next cycle is when we have big run ups like that, like in January, in March, and April, I'm going to sell off a good portion of my grayscale trust that are looking like they're going to moon because it is unnatural for them to do that six or nine months before they're supposed to. 
you know, not for LTCM, BCHC, like a, a GXLM, like the big, the big alts. No, you do get exceptions with smaller alts like Filecoin, corresponding to the File G trust. Um, you know, because Filecoin could, you know, has taken off. Last cycle, it took off in the spring. Yeah, just like Digibyte did, but they didn't. Neither Digibyte or Filecoin didn't really do it. I think they're going to run with the bulk of the altcoins this cycle. But anyway, when, when I see unnatural run-ups in the trusts way before the crypto run is supposed to be starting, I'm going to sell off a good portion of the trust in my Roth IRAs because it's like, it's not natural. I'll make a profit, take profit, and uh, and just wait, wait it out a couple of weeks or a couple of months and buy in when prices are lower. That's just the way things work. So this is where you get a little bit smarter every cycle and not everything repeats exactly the same way, right? So it's we're not always gonna have the same thing happen, but oftentimes things run. So you just gotta, you know, if you just like look, pay attention, you know, you can, you can do better, like obviously. I would not, like I said, I would not employ that strategy in, in any taxable account just because like you lose out, you basically switch over to short-term capital gains taxes. And I do not like paying the, the government any more than I have to. So I don't wanna pay them short-term capital gains taxes on stuff. That's just me, you know, some people, it doesn't matter, um, but it's just me. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's the scoop with that. That's what I'm gonna do differently next cycle. Um, Assuming I remember, and I think I'll remember. I think I'll remember. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, it takes, you know, what it takes to be a great grayscaler. I just want to say this, like, this is tying into the stuff that was happening, uh, you know, with prices recently. Because it's like, I'll see some comments, just a few comments on, like, Caesar's recent videos, where people will say, like, I'm so sick of the price drops in, in LTCN and BCHG. I'm just bleeding out, you know? And I got a garbage truck behind me, so if it's a little noisy, that's that's it. So God bless the garbage men of the world for keeping our world clean, or at least looking cleaner. I don't know, you know, what the landfills look like around here, but anyway. Um But yeah, what it what it takes to be a great skill, you gotta you gotta have you gotta have balls of steel, right? You gotta have cojones. Like man or woman, you gotta have cojones when it comes to holding, because like shit is not easy. But I would say this, like all it takes and not everybody got in last summer for example or even prior to that like in the depths of crypto winter but for those of you that got in last summer or got bought some shares last summer consider this like from a year ago right now bchg has done about a 12x from prices last summer like about a year ago right and ltcn has done about an 8x that's an incredible return now bitcoin cash has not done a 12x no it hasn't it's done like a four and a half x from last summer, just before, you know, when it was sitting around a hundred bucks, it's a little over 400 bucks right now. So it's done about a four and a half X and yet BCHG has done almost triple that, almost a 12 X, right? So you see a benefit in being in a grayscale, you know, buying at the right time. LTCN, I mean, Litecoin hasn't done shit really in terms of movement over the past 12 months. It hasn't really been doing a whole lot. It's like a stable coin kind of, I mean, but nevertheless, LTCN has done an 8X over last summer. That's a great, great return just right there. It, better than index funds, better than growth stocks, better than dividend ETFs. Even if you were to cash out now and get an 8X or a 12X on, on BCHG uh, from shares that you bought a year ago, well, that's still a hell of a deal. That's still better than um, a lot of other assets that you can get into. And it, But it's still, it's nothing compared to what we're going to have moving forward. So it's like... I understand though, people get spooked and they want to sell their shares to each his own. You know, I don't fault anybody for doing that. Um, it's actually good for anybody that wants to get in and buy to have people that are willing to sell. So that's a blessing, right? If you're looking to buy, um, you know, in an IRA account or even a taxable account and, and getting short-term capital gains taxes, well, it's still, it's nice that you can buy shares. Like I'm kind of surprised that, that people can still easily buy shares. And the premiums haven't actually skyrocketed in comparison to where they have been over the past 12 months because we're we're in the end zone. And from my perspective, it's like, I don't know why most investors are giving up and, uh, and are willing to sell their shares so close to the, the end zone. I just don't, I don't get it. Um, but everybody has their reasons and there are legitimate reasons for having to sell. Like maybe you, you bought too much of a trust and you're like, I need to de-risk 
or I need to, I have an unexpected medical emergency or family expense or whatever that comes up on myself, some of my shares, whatever. Um, totally understandable, but it's still a little weird to me, honestly, that we're able to buy shares as easily as we can right now. And the premiums aren't like exploded you know, all over the place. So, um, yeah, so that's just a, it's, it's kind of an oddity. I think I would expect the premiums would start to go up at least probably double what they are, you know, in the next two months, even before LTC and VCHG began their ascent. Uh, I think I would, I would be surprised if we didn't see premiums almost double, you know, on the, on the trusts, on those two trusts for sure. So anyway, so most of you have been holding at least some shares of Grayscale for a very long time. I know a lot of you have been watching my channel for, you know, since last summer. And you bought at least some shares of the trust, you know, last summer. Uh, some of you maybe just found me more recently and you bought, you know, at the beginning of the year or even, you know, spring or whatever. And your cost basis might be higher than than what the prices on the trust are right now. Just don't sweat it. Oh, that's what I would say. Not financial advice. You can sweat it if you want. I don't care. It's it's you. You do you. Um, but like personally, I don't care. I don't care what happens. It, it's cool. It's kind of sad to look back at my portfolio when I do like a one year view of the portfolio value. And I can see how far it's cratered, right? Since I, since March, April, right? But at the other hand, I'm like, damn, I'm like, we're going to be back there and, and beyond that, you know, cause I, and it's like, we had for any of you that were in grayscale at the beginning of the year, you remember we had a nice run up in January and then we had a correction and it seemed like a big correction. But if you look back at the one year price chart, you can barely even see that thing in the price chart. And I have a feeling that that's what the run up that we had in March and April is going to look like when we look at a one year or a three year price chart for these trusts. It's it's hardly going to be visible. Like it's not it's not going to be a big deal, but it feels like a big deal. You know, people have lost fifty percent of the value of their portfolio, for example, or more. You know, since that time, obviously, I can feel like a big deal. But honestly, it's we're going we're going going places. It's going to be good. We're so close, and this um, this only comes around every couple of years. It's gonna feel like a, a long time to wait, folks, to get in back into grayscale or crypto assets like like Coinbase, MicroStrategy, the Bitcoin miners, etc. At really good prices, it's gonna feel like a long time because you gotta wait like like a year and a half after the crypto bull run is over to get the best prices. And then even if you get in then at the depths of the bear market, you got to wait like two years. It's not easy. It's not easy being a crypto investor, but like if you're patient, you're willing to, 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 to take the time, like your, your gains are so much better than what you can get elsewhere. It's just, it's crazy. If you just do the math, it's crazy. It's like, I, I look at the math and I go, here's what I'm going to do with, you know, my son's Roth. You know, it's like, it's going to just ex explode in value. So let me just tell you, give an example. And this is obviously a tax-free example. I'm hoping to get it up to like, it's off up to a value of maybe like a half a million dollars after this bull run, by the end of this bull run, right? And maybe increase it a little bit. Uh, should be able to increase it a little bit with high yield ETFs, right? But let, let's say even if I don't do it, Look, and then next cycle, I do a 10 X and I go from 500,000 to 5 million. Okay. At, he is 11 at that point. Well, if I do a five X on that, it's like, that's, that that's 25 million by the time he's 15. Right. If I could do a five X on the 25 million, again, that's over a hundred million by the time he's 19. And then I just parked that thing in index funds for him. He can't touch it until he's 60. But, uh, I mean, think about that. Like, that's crazy. That's what patience allows you to do when you invest in crypto. Whether native crypto or grayscale or uh, Bitcoin miners or whatever, um, you, you can just do incredible. And the, what I was talking about there with examples of, like, my Roth or his Roth, I wasn't even, like, I'm not, like... Next cycle, I'm just saying like a 10x, a 10x return, trying to be conservative. And that that's a 10x with some rotation. 
you know, because it's, it, it's tax free in a Roth, right? I don't need to worry about short term capital gains. I can I can rotate from one thing to another tax free. So a uh, conservatively a ten x next cycle gets it up to five million, and then conservatively a five x the cycle after that gets it up to twenty five million, and then a five x after that gets it up to one hundred and twenty five million. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. Um, so that's what I'm hoping. I'm going to do rotation on his uh, portfolio. It started out with $7,000. So in order to turn that $7,000 into half a million or close to it, I've got to do rotation. I've got to. And I, the rotation has to work. And if the timing of rotation doesn't work with the trust popping off or me not making the right moves, it's not going to happen. I won't be able to get it up to that number. But even I should be able to get up to 100000 you know, pretty easily, you know, so we'll see, but uh, it just shows you how easy it is to just blow up your wealth and blow up like your, your Roth IRA, your traditional IRA, your SIP IRA, whatever it is that you've got, you can just blow it up. And, um, if you've got like a SIP IRA or a traditional IRA, you might want to take a look at converting it to a Roth. You got to pay taxes on whatever you've got in your SEP or your traditional IRA. But once you do, once you do that, I mean, it's, it's t tax free in your Roth coming out because you got, you got money in your traditional or SEP IRA and you're, you're pulling that out at age 60 or afterwards. Well, you got to pay, you know, ordinary income tax rates on that. And that can be very, very expensive depending on how much you're pulling out, what your tax rates are, all that kind of stuff can be very expensive. So in my opinion, it's worth it like to do a conversion to a Roth if you can, if you got time. Um, but just think about it. Um, all right. I think that's it. I talked about a lot of things in this video. Like I said, I'm not going to do a ton of videos, but when I do, I'll probably talk about a number of topics just to kind of get it, um, get it off my chest, I guess, get it, get it out of my head. Some of the things I've been thinking about, um, with regards to this, we're going to do really well. I mean, obviously I don't know how well we're going to do, but we're going to do really well. Things will go well, this crypto bull run. So I just have faith. Like if you're starting to lose faith, it's totally understandable, but we're, we're good. Um, we're so freaking close to things moving. It's just, it's crazy. I don't want things to be pushed back, but they might. Like I said, like if we look at last, last cycle, just before I wrap up here, if we look at last cycle, LTCN started its ascent end of October and we can make the argument and people have like that things are shifted forward by a month because Bitcoin having happened a month earlier this cycle than it did last, right? So if you take a look at that, you could say, well, potentially LTCN could start its launch at the end of September and maybe early October is when we have some really nice prices, like as in like $200 plus LTCN. Um, but there are no guarantees it's going to happen exactly the same way, right? And, and things, like I said, could be pushed back a little bit by macroeconomic issues, um, by what's happening with Bitcoin, because Bitcoin's a big driver, right? Obviously in the crypto uh, cycle. So we'll see, but we are so freaking close that uh you know for somebody to give up if somebody's been holding on to grayscale for like months or years and if they give up now it's like damn it's like it's such an opportunity lost in my opinion um because it is it it is it's i don't know it's an awesome investment all right i'll hope you guys are doing well i'm gonna end it here hope you guys are enjoying your summer we are in august which means it's like you know fall is not that far away because up here in the midwest the temperature you know the weather is still nice till mid-september it's still nice after that but it's mid-september late september is when the leaves start to change and then you know fall is coming and winter is not that far away so i'm not really looking forward to that although it will signal that grayscale stuff and crypto stuff in general is really going to take off for a lot of the altcoins so it's all good. It'll be fun. Fall is a time of harvest, right? And, and we're going to be able to start, begin the harvest this fall. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys take care.